Afternoon folks, Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. We've got a really, really rainy day here in Southeast Ohio. What I thought I'd do today is I'm going to make a video on how to set up your bushcraft fishing rod or your 18th century fishing rod, very similar to a Tenkara fishing rod. And learning from other cultures and learning from the past is really what the Pathfinder School is built around. Learning together, passing on the tribal knowledge. And Tenkara fishing has been around for a couple of thousand years. It's basically a line, a rod, and a lure. It's very similar to modern day fly fishing, very similar to 18th century fly fishing that we talked about in the past, because you have no reel. You only have the rod, the line, and an artificial lure that you're trying to catch fish with. Now you could obviously use some type of bait on the end of a hook, with a strike indicator or bobber and you could do what's called dapping and you could do the same thing with a fly where you just pick it up and move it, pick it up and move it and I think that's very much what the 18th century fisherman angling as it was known then did Tenkara as it's known in Japan but with the invention of or the reinvention or reintroduction of Tenkara by Tenkara USA Tenkara fishing has become popularized by a lot of backpackers because the Tenkara rod collapses down very small and I've got the privilege of working with that company very closely lately and I'm going to be doing some videos with the Tenkara rod but I wanted to show you some lessons learned in bushcraft or survival type fishing from Tenkara because you can very easily set up a system that is almost exactly like Tenkara uses that you can carry with you and then you can adapt it to any fishing rod that you can make from natural materials. In this case we're going to use a bamboo rod, the same bamboo rod that I used during the On the Water's Edge series when we talked about 18th century fly fishing. We're going to use about a 13, 14 foot rod, but we're going to set the end of that rod up so that it is Tenkara adaptable. And that's what's so amazing about the Tenkara system. Not only the Tenkara USA adaption of a collapsible rod, which makes it very small and easily compactable to carry it while you're backpacking, whatever the case may be, but the simplicity of being able to change things out to adapt to the scenario is very unique to Tenkara. And I want to show you that today, and we're going to show you how to adapt that to this cane pole and a couple of the different knots that they use. And we're going to use knots that are very similar to the ones we already have used on our basic knot video so that anyone who already knows those knots will be able to adapt that system fairly well to Tenkara fishing or to what I'm going to call Bushcraft Tenkara. Stay with me guys. Okay, this is a Tenkara USA fishing rod case and this is what the Tenkara rod comes in. It's very small. I would say the total length of this is probably less than two feet. I don't know the exact dimensions. I apologize for that. But it is less than two feet for sure. And basically the rod comes very nicely packed in its own pouch inside that tube. It has a nice cork handle on it for comfort in the hand for fishing, unlike something that you would have in the bush that you made, and it is collapsible. So it has a cork on the end of it that you pull off. And when you pull that cork off, you're going to expose a small piece of braided material here that is called the Lillian. And I think that you can see that. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to put it down here and get a close-up of it so that you can see it against an object. Okay, so back to the end of our rod or the rod tip. The rod tip of this Tenkata fishing rod has a piece of braided line on it called a Lillian. And it has a knot tied in it that you can see right here. Now this is a very small, dainty set up because it's made for fly fishing for trout and things like that. That's what this rod is set up for is a fly fishing type rod. And then it basically telescopes out into sections into a longer rod like any telescoping rod would do. The premise of Tenkara that I like so much is exactly this. This piece of braided Lillian they call it that you everything else is attached to. So let's put this away for a minute and let's talk about how to set up a bushcraft fishing rod with that Lillian on the end of it, just like this. And then we will go back to talking about the Tenkata USA concept 
and we'll use this rod to fish with in another episode of these videos. But for now, I want to show you how to make a bushcraft adaptable system based on Tenkara technology. Okay, so the first thing we have to do to make our fishing rod very much like Tenkara is so we need to put a Lillian, what's called a Lillian, on the end of this rod. And a Lillian is simply a piece of braided line. And I'll show you on a Tenkara rod what that looks like. It's a piece of braided material that you'll tie everything else to. It's a very simple connection. So I want to sand this down on my rod tip. And then I've just taken a piece of paracord and I've gutted it. And basically I'm going to find a fine end of that and open that up and I'm going to slide that over the top of this tip and slide it down on there hopefully far enough that I can tie it to it permanently. We'll see if I can get it down on there far enough to do that. And this is going to become my Lillian. But I've got to permanently tie this to the rod and if I don't have any type of glue material I could use some type of pine pitch probably to help stabilize and hold that on there but I think that I can make a good enough knot just with some number six bank line to hold that on there because it's a braided material it's going to be pulling tight when you pull against it anyway it's going to be self tightening okay now that I've put that piece of braided paracord over the top of my bamboo at the end of my rod now I can attach this permanently it's important to have this out here because now all of the stress is going to pull straight on the front of this rod. There's not going to be any jerking side to side. If I were just to tie it on here, it would be jerking down or across. This is going to be pulling straight from the front when we're done. So now we want to permanently attach this. If we don't have any glue because we're in the bush, then we can just use a regular wrapping knot that we've used in several other videos where we just take this and go down to the bottom and we start wrapping up from the tail very tightly and if we get a couple of wraps on here then we can cinch everything down pretty tight like that and wrap that all the way up this loop to the top that we've created and again we want to keep all of this stuff really tight all the way And I've given myself probably an inch or so of lap there. And this basically, once this is done, I should never have to do this again. This should make this rod very adaptable, like a Tenkara type rod. We'll talk more about that in this video. And we just want to go out to the very end, but we don't want to get onto the material itself, or as far as out past the end, and our end's right there. So we're about in the last wrap we want to make before we put this line through the loop. So I'm going to hold that steady with my thumb and put this through the loop, just like this. And then I'm going to, while I'm holding on to that, grab this end and pull this down tight, like that. And that should make everything on the end of that line very, very tight. I've got to be real careful at this point not to pull too hard one way or the other on that tip so we don't snap it off. Now we've pulled that loop connection basically down through here and we've got it wrapped permanently. Remember that this stuff will all melt because it is nylon material. So we're just going to trim this off, trim this off, and then kind of melt that a little bit to make it a permanent connection. So now I'm just going to come around here, trim this tag off close, trim this tag off fairly close, but leave myself just a little, little tag there, about an eighth of an inch. Then I want to get my fire stick out, my lighter, whatever I've got. And this is where I'm going to turn my rod a little bit here so you can see. I'm gonna to try to make all this permanent. So I'm going to take this little tag end here, 
put this lighter to it and melt it. Push it up on there, just like that. And then I'll look on the other end, make sure I'm good there. There's a little bit of a tip hanging out right there. If I just hit that real quick, it's not going to hurt anything. There we go. Just like that. Now I can trim away this excess Lillian because it's not going to pull off of there. So I'll get my knife out and we'll just trim that off. Now if i got any excess there, I can just melt that. It's not a big deal. Just like that push it in and against there and now we got a permanent lily and connected to the end of that rod now what we want to do is we want to tie a knot in this lily and material and just an overhand knot is all we need so we're going to come out here tie a good overhand knot in this cinch it down really good with our hand be careful not to pull on this tip. We're just holding the line to cinch that down. Just like that. And then we're going to melt that as well so that it becomes a permanent knot right there. The big advantage to using paracord for some of this stuff is how well it melts. But the bank line melts really well too. And that'll give us a permanent knot on that Lillian that we can use and now all of our lines are going to be attached to that exactly like you would in Tenkara. Okay, once I have set my rod up with my Lillian on it for bushcrafting purposes or survival or whether I've got my Tenkara rod and I have the Lillian set up on that it doesn't matter. In this case we're using more bushcraft style or survival style materials. What I've done is I've just cut myself a piece of wood to wind line around and this is the entire length of my fishing rod for the 18th century fly fishing, tenkara, bushcraft fishing, whatever you want to call it. This is really all I need to carry. As long as I've got that small piece of paracord with me in my kit somewhere or some paracord, I can make that lily and adapt it to the end of any rod that I decide to make. Then all I need is this and what this does is this allows me to carry multiples of these to change things out on the fly depending on conditions. And that is what's so fantastic about the Tenkara system and its adaptability to bushcraft and survival because with normal fishing techniques where you put an eye on the end of a rod or whatever you do as a connection point, you need to really tie a knot directly to that in order to be able to fish. Then if you decide you're going to change something, let's say I was using some type of a monofilament line for still fishing for panfish, and I decide now I want to do something else, like put floating fly line on to try my hand at fly fishing possibly, then I'm going to have to cut the line and tie another line on. And my line consistently will get shorter and shorter. With this system, I never have to cut my line. I set my line up one time, for whatever type of fishing I want to do. I put the fly on there that I want to use and that's another thing that is very important to understand about the Tenkara methodology or the way they think is they didn't carry you know 40 or 50 different flies with them. They carried one or two flies with them set up on lines just like this. Maybe the lines were different lengths depending on how far it was across the stream or where they wanted to fish and that was it. You know the problem with Fishing lures in general is, as my buddy Tony Daniel would say, most fishing lures catch more people than they catch fish. And that's a fact. It's the same way with bushcraft equipment, survival gear, and everything else. It catches more people than it does a lot of people good. Because if it's not a good piece of gear and you don't know how to use it, the rest doesn't matter. Most expert fly fishermen can take a very dainty black type fly that looks like an ant or something like that or a gnat or some type of a fly, you know, hatched fly and they can throw that in the right spot with the right presentation and catch fish consistently and that's what the Japanese fishermen in the mountains did what they called tenkata. They were fishing for a living to get food for their family and to sell and they only carried limited amounts of equipment because they knew exactly how to present that equipment to catch fish. So I've got this set up with a popping bug that very consistently catches fish for me. 
So I know that if the panfish are hitting top water, they're most likely going to hit this bug. It has yellow on it, it has red on it, it has white eyes on it, it has some legs and flash on it, and this consistently catches fish. So what I've done is, I've set this up to be my fishing line that I use with my Tenkata system that's set up on my bushcraft fishing rod. Now, let's talk about the components of this line because with fly fishing or Tenkara fishing or 18th century fly fishing in general, it's not just as easy as tying one piece of line to the end of your rod and that's what you're going to use because generally if you're tying flies, you have a very small weight, a very small amount of weight that you're trying to throw or cast. So your line has to be fairly heavy, but the end of that line has to be something that you can present to the fish without spooking them off. So you have three components. You have what's called a leader, which is basically what this piece here is. This is my leader line, and it's made out of a number six bank line. And this is my leader. And I take this leader, and I wax it with fixin' wax, just like this, to help it to float. And I don't have to do this every time I fish with it. I just do it, you know, once in a while, and it helps this line to float because it impregnates it with that wax and it's going to help it float on top of the water. And on the end of this leader line, I have a connection loop tied on here. And that loop basically is nothing more than a figure eight knot. It could be an overhand knot. It could be a surgeon's knot. What's important is that you have a loop on there without a slip knot. And I hope that you guys can see that pretty good against this brown blanket. I may need to lay something down there of a different color for you. Okay, so my leader line, which is my line that goes directly to my rod, directly to the Lillian, just has a loop tied in it. And that loop is permanent. It can be a figure eight knot, like I said, it could be an overhand knot, it could be a surgeon's knot, whatever the case, it could be a bowline knot. But whatever it is, it's a permanent knot that you've tied there, and you're not going to take it out. You're going to leave it just like it is. Then you have got leader that's about as long as your rod wrapped around here. So in my case, I've got about 12 or 13 feet of what's called leader line. And this could be any kind of leader. It could be a furled leader for fly fishing. It could be, it could be a floating fly line. This stuff floats pretty good. That's why I like using it. And if you wax it, it floats really good. It's not real heavy, but it makes a great leader line. And this line is going to be your shock absorber, basically, to help fish not break anything between the rod tip and what's called the tippet. And the tippet is just another piece of line. In this case, I'm using about a six pound braided line here. And this is my tippet. Okay, so at the end of my leader line, I have another loop tied in it exactly the same as the one at the beginning. So this basically is just two loops. Like I said, the knot is not that important as long as it's a good sturdy knot that's not going to slip. You want a permanent knot in the end of that, it's not going to slip. And again, this could be any type of line that you want. It could be a heavier braided monofilament like a spider wire. It could be some type of a furled casting line for fly fishing. It could be bank line, whatever the case may be. But this line is going to be fairly heavy because this is what's going to help you cast your fly. Now, what you need connecting to that is your tippet. And your tippet is generally the line that's going to go straight to your fly, your hook, whatever the case may be. In this case, I'm using a spider wire and this is an eight pound test spider wire but it's a very small diameter and I've tied another loop in this one exactly like the loop I tied in this one and I'm going to use a loop to loop connection for that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this loop here one loop goes through the other loop and then the end of my tippet which generally is somewhere between three and six feet long I'll put it through that loop and pull it down so that I have a loop-to-loop -loop connection here, and I'll go ahead and pull that knot through the loop, just like this, so that I can tighten it down. Once I get it over the top of that knot, it doesn't want to let go of the knot very well. Just like that. And then I'll pull that down, and that gives me a loop-to-loop -loop connection. And that's the beauty of this whole system, is that most everything is loop-to-loop -loop type connections. Then when I get down to the other end of my tippet, I need to tie my fly to that. And it doesn't matter what knot you tie in that tippet. It can be any type of knot from some type of an improved clinch knot to a fisherman's knot, whatever you use to attach your hooks to your line. My favorite knot basically is just to 
run that line straight through the eye of my lure or my hook, whatever the case may be, and I got a very small hole in this. So I'll run that right through the eye, bring that up just a little bit, and give myself a little bit of a leader there, a little bit of a tag, so it's tied in just like this. And then I will turn the lure over about six times, or turn the hook over about six times to wrap that line. And now that has caused that line to get wrapped just like this. Then I'll take just the tag end and I'll pull that down a little bit because I want to minimize the amount of tag I have. So I just pull that down. I take that tag into that line and I put it through the loop I formed in the eye of that lure, just like this. So it's going right through that eye. Let me get this leg out of your way here so you can see that. So that loop goes through my eye loop. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that up. And I'm going to put it right back through this loop that I just formed. Just like this. And the best thing you can do with this now, before you tighten it down tight, is to wet that line a little bit with some spit. Because when you pull this down tight, it's going to have friction. Or you can just pull it very slowly. But when you pull that line down, it's going to tighten up just like that. And then you can trim that tag off that you have right here. Tag off of there. And you've got your line set up to fish. So now what you would do is you would take your device, your winding device, and what I generally do is just take my hook. I use soft wood for this. So I just take my hook and I'll just stick it in one end of my line winding device. Just like this. And then I will wind my line around it like this. Now when you pull this off, if for some reason it's kinked, you just want to pull it through your hands and straighten it out and kind of stretch it and pull the kinks out of it. When I get to the end, what I generally do with this is I will leave this last wrap a little bit loose, come around the top, put it through that loop, and pull it down, but I won't ever let the knot go through it. So basically that knot binds it because I don't want that knot to go through the loop. If that knot goes through this other side like that, it's going to loosen up on you. So you've got to keep that knot taut in there. And not really let that line slip through. So when you come back around, you're just going to come underneath like this and hold that knot inside there and pull it down. Just like this. That'll give you a nice taut line right there. That's not going to come undone in your backpack. Okay, then you're ready to connect that to what you've done to set your rod up to be able to fish in tenkata fashion or set your rod up in tenkata fashion, which means now you want to connect your leader line, sometimes called the level line or furled casting line, or it could be a floating fly line, whatever the case may be, it's your leader line. You can take this and connect it to the Lillian on your rod. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay guys, so let's talk about connecting our line to our Lillian. And this is exactly the same way you would do it with a Tenkara rod. This is just a way to adapt it for bushcrafting. And I've used paracord material here because it was the only thing I could think of that was very much like the Lillian on the end of a Tenkara rod that you would have in your backpack. So now we take this line that we've got here and all we have to do is pull the loop out and that's all we need and what we're going to do with that is we're going to open that loop we're going to pass the line through the loop just like this 
so that we have basically a slip knot situation right there just like we would have if we were making a trap and then we're going to pass the knot on the end of our Lillian through that and pull it down tight so basically you have another loop to loop connection right there that can't come off now all you have to do is undo your line and you're ready to fish the beauty of this system is that if I want to take this off it's very simple to get it right back off of there just like this and put another line on there so if I've got a couple of these setups in my in my system or in my pack where I've got one set up for fly fishing maybe I've got a floating line on there I have another one set up with maybe a line for wet fly fishing and then maybe I have a line set up that the tippet is just a hook maybe a small split shot and a strike indicator of some sort and you can buy very very small strike indicators and now I've got a setup for still fishing as well. Now I've got the gamut covered. This is a strike indicator or bobber that I use a lot of the time when I'm fishing. You can see the size comparison of this. It's very small. This one just has a toothpick ran through it. But you don't even have to have that. You could have this on the end of your tippet. And then when you got out there, you could just cut yourself a stick or break off a stick and shove down in there because your line goes through it and that will hold it in place. And that's the perfect size for something like this. Okay guys, well I appreciate you joining me for this video today and I wanted to encourage you to go check out Tenkara USA. We're going to be doing a whole lot more video with this Tenkara rod and Tenkara fishing equipment in the future in our On the Water's Edge series. But I wanted to talk a little bit about it today because the system in general is so adaptable to bushcraft and survival. And I think it's important for us to understand that we can learn from other cultures, we can learn from other time periods, and we can learn from everybody else. So let's keep learning together. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I thank you for everything that you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my instructors, sponsors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.